Hello everyone, this is teacher Dennis Kruger again. In this video, we learn how to create and format tables in Microsoft Word. If you're new to this channel, I'm going to ask you to subscribe and also hit the notification area so that you can receive notifications whenever similar videos are added to the channel. In this lesson today, we'll be covering one introduction to tables, look at how to create tables, then we'll explore the methods of formatting a table at basic level and then at advanced level. We'll conclude our discussion with uh, how to perform calculations in a table using several formulas. So let's get started. First things first, our introduction. What's a table? A table is a grid of cells arranged in rows and columns. Tables are very useful for various tasks. For example, we can use them to present data, both numerical data and textual data. Microsoft Word, we can create blank tables. We can also convert text into tables. Later, we can apply a variety of styles and formats to existing tables. So let's let's look at this example. Before you insert table, it is important you always conceptualize the structure of tables. <clears throat> a table consists of columns and rows. Consider columns as vertical segments and uh, consider rows as horizontal segments. In our case, this table has column 1, which has median, column 2, which has capacity, column 3, which has quantity, column 4, which has price, and column 5, which has amount. So, we say there are five se vertical segments or five columns in this table. Now, subsequently, also rows as horizontal segments, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and row 7. So the structure of this table consists of 7 horizontal segments or 7 rows. Now the last structure of a table is a cell. A cell is an intersection, a column and a row. There are many small boxes or there are very many cells here that have specific data in a particular column. So that's it for a structure of a table. Before you insert in a table, first conceptualize the structure of the table. Having looked at that introduction, we now move to the next part of creating tables. And in creating tables, I will explore the three methods of creating table. One, creating a table using insert table and drawing a table. Then we also look at how to convert text into a table. So, we begin with the first method. So, you can see my desktop. Normally, I encourage you for good file management to create folders and use those folders to organize your files. I've created one folder here called Insert Table, so I will double click to open it, right click on it, and select Open. And after my folders open, Next task is to create a file. So I take the cursor inside the folder, right click inside, select new, and then choose Microsoft Word. So I've created a file. The next part is insert or put the file name. So let's consider saving this tape, this file as inserting and formatting, formatting tables. And when you've written your file name, press enter. To open this file, move the pointer to the file, and then double click on the file for it to open. Well, that's Microsoft Word. You have been using Microsoft Word in the previous video. We've explored different features of Microsoft Word. So we'll proceed. So inside this Word file, we want to explore the methods of creating a table. But let's begin with method one. In method one, we said we can insert a table using uh, the insert table command. Now, how do we utilize this method? 
in inserting a table. First things is you move your cursor, you navigate the insert tab. From the insert tab, click on tables. Already you have your structure of your table. So the first way using the insert table is by capturing the table manually that is using this tool. Eh? Simply drag the cursor over these cells as you build your table according to the structure you should wish to achieve. Let's just take a look at a simple structure, a 4x5. Literally, that would mean you want to have four columns and then five rows. And when you've selected the required cells, as far as the structure of your table is concerned, you click OK. Well, like you can see, we have quickly created a table using uh, insert tab and simply by selecting the cells. So let's skip the second way. In the second way of inserting a table using the insert table command involves navigating back to the insert tab and then from there we click the table and from the table group you click the drop down menu. From this drop down menu we move and click on insert table. Upon clicking on the insert table, you will get this dialog box. We shall utilize it a lot. Eh? Uh, enter the number of columns and rows you wish your table to have. Let me consider making this table have five columns, five vertical segments, and then five rows. You can either type inside this box or you can use the resizing handles here to expand the number of columns and rows and once you have entered the number of columns and rows you click OK. I'll come back later and explore the purposes of auto fit behavior. But once you have put your structure just click OK. And well you can see we have a new table that is still using method 1 while utilizing the insert table command. Okay, we're moving to the second method, inserting a table, method 2. In method 2, to insert a table, we go to the insert command. And after clicking on insert command, click on table. Instead of capturing the cells or using the insert table, we use the draw method. So you from this drop down menu click on draw and automatically when you click draw table the mouse arrow will change to a pencil now to draw the table we begin by drawing the outside borders and to draw the outside borders you long press your left button on the mouse and then drag drag the table as as big as you wish it to look like yeah? And well, that is my outside border. Let me just consider having such a table. And having drawn the outside border, the next is to partition, to divide your table, columns and rows. Eh? So let's begin with the vertical segments. To build the vertical segments, you take the pointer at the outside vertical, outside border, and then now drag the, drag the pencil down. Eh? excuse me, uh, drag the pen down. And once you've reached there, automatically you'll see the, the, the row appear. Drag it, drag it inside. So you, you keep doing the same by dividing your table into vertical segments. So it is important even at this point for you to have conceptualized the structure of the table. Don't just simply come and drop. So, one, two, three, four, five. I would wish to have five columns. Eh? To have five rows, to, to draw the rows as well, you use your pen and draw the horizontal lines. That is to separate, rather to create rows. And as you draw, you keep counting your rows manual until you achieve the required number of the rows. So, you can see we've quickly drawn our table using the pencil. Now, when you're done in drawing your table, from the layout tab and the draw tab, move your cursor to this group and 
this select draw table so that mouse shape goes back to the insertion, no more cursor. Otherwise, if you wish to make any change to your table, you can always go to layout tab and then from draw command, draw here, click on draw table to add any new column, any new row. Well, in the last method on how to insert a table, we want to take a scenario where we have data in our table and we want to insert, we want to convert text into the table. So method three, we're going to explore how to uh, convert text into a table. So let's create some text. Let me have name here and then I'm using tab key to separate the content. Let me have just three names, dense, 30, Irene, 40, I'm using tab key, then Sarah, 15. So in converting text in table, you need to have the text. Eh? So I've created some text. Then I'm going to explore how you'd convert that text into a table. To do that, begin by highlighting your data. And after you've highlighted your data, move to the Insert tab. From the Insert tab, click on Table. Loving, click the drop-down arrow on Table. From this menu, click on Convert Text into Table. And once you click that, you then have to move to this. Of course, you'll have this dialog box which you have utilized before. But we are going to utilize the lower part of this dialog box. It says separate text at. So we have paragraphs, we have columns, tabs, and other. Now to convert this text in the table, you simply choose the way how you want your content to be broken down in the table. Do you want the data to be broken down in form of tabs? Or you want the data to be separated in form of paragraphs? Or you want to utilize it comma for now i will just consider utilizing tabs eh? because i was hitting the tab key in order to space data but where your content or your text was created separated with commas then you will have to utilize comma to separate your data having selected a choice how you want to separate your data you click ok and boom that's our table so well we have explored the three methods of creating a table. Method one, using insert tab. Method two, drawing the table. And uh, method three, that how to convert text into a table. So let's proceed to the next part of our video, which is now formatting a table. Well, consider formatting as making changes in the appearance. So having drawn your table, you can add very many features to that table. Let's begin with the basics eh, like of formatting. First basics I'm going to explore is how to adjust the column width and the row height. Then we'll explore how to add delete rows together with columns in our table. Then we'll explore how to align text within the table. Then we'll conclude with uh, changing table borders and styles. Eh? So from our table that we have inserted, we're going to start with this first table that we built using method one. So to give this table uh, an appearance, we can add new rows, we can add columns. Eh? So there are literally very many methods in adding columns and rows. Eh? Of course, the first task is normally to position the cursor where you want to insert the column. Just position the cursor where you want to insert the column. And after our position, you utilize, you can simply right click on that very cell and then go to insert. We have insert columns to the left and insert columns to the right. The left will add the column on the left of the cursor, then the right will add the columns on the right of the cursor. We can also add a new column by utilizing the layout tab. 
the layout tab we simply use the left and the right eh? we put the layout tab move the rows and columns group insert left the same thing we earlier on looked at and then also insert right the two commands would allow us to add new columns our table but depending on where we want to add those columns in our table well the next part is how do we expand the width of particular columns so we always utilize very many ways first way is by using the ruler and then the second way is by using the layout tab so make sure your ruler is visible if you don't have your ruler very visible, consider going to the view tab and in the group of show, check the box for the ruler. It is this ruler that can simplify you on how to expand or like collapse or reduce the width of a particular column. So mine is already visible here. So I will explore now the set lines of expanding table so to expand the table you click in the cell that you want to expand and then you go to and then now drag this to expand the width we can also expand the table by clicking the particular cell go to the layout tab in a group of cell size where there is of course under cell size we have the column the cell height or the row height then we also have the column width so to adjust the column width you simply use the resizing arrows to expand your column column width the same to the row if you wanted to expand the row height you from the layout tab here and uh, table row height combo box you can increase the height of so that's how we can control the format of our table by adjusting the width and adjusting the, the, the height of a particular cell or a particular row column okay we now move to the next part how do we delete our tab table how do we delete rows how do we delete columns and delete rows so if you wish to at any time erase particular rows and columns in your table it is important you select those rows or select those columns that you want to delete and having selected them there are a couple of methods you can right click on that uh, column you have selected and then from the side menu you go and click delete columns the row will be erased let me try to undo this we can also delete the column from the layout tab and the rows and columns group you simply click on delete and choose delete column lastly when you have highlighted the particular column you can also delete by on your keyboard using the backspace key the backspace key will automatically erase any content that you have highlighted in your table and part of your table so i also want to demonstrate to us how we can delete a row to delete a row to highlight that particular row and then like we did in the previous case you right click one of the right click on that selected content and use delete to to, to, to remove that that row you can also consider deleting a particular section your table maybe rows by after highlighting them go to the layout tab and then from the delete command here click delete rows finally we can also delete a row after highlighting it by using backspace key after highlight so <laughs> In the last method, after you've hi highlighted the particular row, you just still hit the backspace key on your keyboard and then press enter to delete. So that's it on how to delete rows and columns in a particular table.
Although very importantly, in some instances, you may wish to just erase some section of your table. You can always click in a particular table that you wish to erase some section, then go to the layout tab, click on eraser, and having selected the rubber, go and then click on the part of the table that you want to remove. Just click on the part of the table you want to remove and automatically that part will be erased from your, your, your table accordingly. You've seen some complicated tables and you've wondered how they achieved them. So you, after inserting the table, can use the eraser tool to remove particular section of the tables. Eh? And uh, we now proceed to the other part, the final part of our uh, module. We looked at how to adjust column width, looked at how to add, delete rows and columns. Then we conclude with aligning text within tables. Eh? So let us consider putting some text in this table. I want to put here medium. Now when entering content in your table, you can always use tab key to navigate from one cell to the other. Use the tab key to navigate cell to the other. So let's keep putting content in this table. So as we put content in our table, we just keep press the tab key to move from one cell to the other. Now, tab key is very powerful. It can literally also help you to add new rows. Eh? In case you reach the end of the table, tab key on your keyboard can help you to add new rows. Okay, that is adding content. Now, how do we align content in the table? If I have some content here, and I wish this content to be in the center that particular cell, or I wish to put it at any position of that cell. So I highlight the content in the table, and having highlighted the content in the table, I move to the Layout tab, and under the Layout tab, we use Alignment Group. There are many ways of aligning content in that table. Perhaps I'll use the center here so that the content is put in the middle. But you can explore the other ways of aligning content from the layout tab. Okay, we can also consider now applying the same feature to the other parts of the table. And finally, we want to conclude this basic level by trying to add some borders around our table. How do we add borders around our tables? Borders control the outlines, they the control, control the, the, the outlines of our table. So how do we add the borders? You highlight your table. After you've highlighted your table, you navigate to Table Design tab. Now there are these two tools, two tabs. We have Table Design tab and then the Layout tab. These tools are very helpful in formatting a table. They will only appear when you have selected your table. Okay, so having selected your table and clicked on the table design tab, move to the group of borders. Begin by choosing the line style you wish to apply for your borders. That is step one. And having chosen the line style, you can also consider choosing the size of that style. The size is measured in points. You can as well consider putting the color. So three things I've done. I chose the line style, chose the points, the size of that line, and then added the color. Now to add borders to our table, we move to the next command, which is borders. Click the drop down command. And from that drop down command, you can now choose the type of border you wish. There are many commands in this drop down menu. Bottom border, top border, all borders, but I want to go with outside borders, outside borders. You can utilize that same procedure to add borders, but just always begin by selecting the content in your table and thereafter continue with the, the table design tab.
Well, we're going to proceed to the next part, which then will involve looking at the styles. How do we change the styles in our table? I wish to highlight this table. So for any formatting command you wish to apply to your table, you have to first select your table or select the part of the table you wish to format. In this case, I have highlighted the second table and having highlighted it, we move to the table design tab that we have used. From the table design tab, we have a called table styles. Click the drop down arrow on table styles. And you can see there are many styles, that there, there are many styles from which we can apply our tables to. Simply go through these styles and choose the styles which suits your preference. Eh? The beauty is there's always a live preview of those styles as you navigate through them. So this is how you can apply styles to your table. Well, additional to those styles, you can choose to further format eh, your styles by using table styles options. Eh? For example, header row would highlight the header row. First column setting would highlight the first column. Then branded rows would highlight rows. Uh, and then branded columns would brand the columns eh, uniquely. So you can consider customizing styles in the particular uh, table style you have applied using this table style option. And that's it. For the formatting a table at basic level, just look at how adding new rows, how you can delete rows, how you can expand the width of the particular columns, and then also look at how you can add borders, and then finally how you can add styles of your table. Okay, the next part of our video is I wish that we look at the other ways of formatting a table. Now, we can also format our table at advanced level or as advanced users. What does this entail? In formatting table at advanced level, we look at how we can merge and split cells. We look at how we can add shading or colors to your cells. We look at how you can apply table styles or themes to your table. And then finally, we look at how you can sort data in tables. So let's begin with uh, merging. Consider our table that we have drawn above this table. I'll click in the first, in the last cell. I want to add more rows, eh? so I'll use the tab key on my keyboard, pressing tab key to add new rows, eh? just to have some representative number. So let's begin with the first thing, merging. What is to merge? Well, merge means to combine. Eh? So in your table, you can combine your cells into one big cell. Huh? So how do you merge cells in your table? Begin by selecting those cells you want to merge. And having selected those cells you want to merge, go to the Layout tab. There are many ways of merging, but let's begin with the Layout tab. On the Layout tab, we have a complete group called Merge. From this group, you simply click on Merge. But after you've highlighted your cells, let me try to combine this as well. Highlight the cells you want to combine. You can also consider right-clicking on cells and click Merge. Well, that's how we can merge. So Merge allows us to combine cells into one. The second advanced formatting feature is splitting cells. To split is to divide into smaller units. So splitting allows us to chop, partition our cells into smaller units. For example, I have one cell here and I want to divide into three compartments. compartments eh? So what I do is I navigate to the layout tab after selecting the cell, put the layout tab, then from the group of match, click on split cells. Now, whenever you click split cells, you must already have the structure how you want to divide that table into. So I wish to have still to remain one row, but I want to have three columns. I want to have three small groups. Eh? So after I've set the number of columns I wish to divide, I click OK. Well, 
you can see we have split it we have divided our box into small let us do it again for this cell click in the cell go to the layout tab click split cells then enter the number of boxes you want to divide it to. it is still one row because it is you want to keep it as a row so maybe one row and then divide it into two so the row will stay but it will be divided vertically you can also consider dividing a given box into small uh, rows eh? for example in this one you go to split go back to the layout tab go to split cells and then let us keep it at one column but put three rows eh? so that's how our cell would look like so merging allows us to combine cells into one splitting allows us to divide cells into smaller units eh? So the next part in advanced formatting is shading cells. So how do we shade cells? Let us consider shading this cell. Step one, click in the cell you want to shade. Step two, navigate to table design. Step three, click the drop down arrow for borders and borders. And then go and select borders and shading. There are three tabs in this dialog box. We have borders, we have page border, we need shading. So select shading. And then there are two ways of shading. You can shade by filling in a color, that particular cell. Or you can shade by uh, choosing a pattern. Still under patterns, click the drop down arrow and then look for the style that you wish. But in any case, even after you have chosen either fill or pattern, under preview here, always click the drop down arrow on apply to and choose the particular uh, preview. For example, you can show the paragraph, can shade paragraphs, you can shade cells, or we can shade tables. I want to choose cells, and then click OK. Wow, you can see, it. I have shaded cells. Uh, let me try to shade this as well. I click in the particular cell, then go to table design, under borders, click on borders and shading, then select shading tab, go to patterns, choose the style. You can use the scroll bars here to navigate until you get the pattern of preference. Then finally, preview, choose apply to cell. In case you wish to apply to that particular cell, and then click OK. So that's how you can shade cells in a table. The next part, like you've observed, we are going to look at how we can apply uh, how we can apply text direction to our table. You can observe that this word edge is horizontal, is horizontal, but you can make it to take any text direction. So how do you add direction to your text? Eh? Highlight the content, then go to the layout tab, or you can just right click on your data. In any case, choose whatever you wish like, to do. So when you've right clicked, go to text direction and select how you want your text to look like. Eh? Select the orientation of your text. Still, let me try to make this one look up. Highlight the word. Go to the layout tab. Alignment group. Click on text direction. And uh, select the direction you wish to add your text. So that's how we can apply text direction to our table. And finally, at that very point, we want to look at how we can sort data in a table. You know, sorting allows us to organize data according to a given order. I have a table here, but you may wish to alphabetically organize that data in that table. So to sort data in that table, begin by highlighting the data. To sort, highlight all the data in that table. Then go to the layout tab. From the layout tab, click on sort. And when you click sort, you'll get this dialog box. You must have at least knowledge of the column with which you want to sort. Now, uh, below this dialog box, there is this part my list has. If you wish to utilize the headings to sort data, select the header row. 
But where your table does not have a heading and you want to sort all the data in the table, then you can select header row. But we'll skip it at header row because the first row in our table is a header, is keeping the column headings. So how do we sort now data in the table? Begin by choosing the column with which you want to sort your data. Then select the type. Do you want to sort data which is in text or numbers? But we we'll keep it in text because that column, if you can see, is keeping text. And finally, choose the order. Ascending, organize data from smallest to the largest, then descending, organized vice versa. I would wish the data to be organized alphabetically. So I select ascending and click OK. Wow, the data has been sorted. Eh? Just that in my table, I had some empty rows. Let me delete these rows away. Then I highlight the data again. From there, I move the layout tab, go to sort data. Then from there, select the column with which I want to sort by, select the order and click OK. That is how we sort data in our table. Very important skill. Perhaps when compiling your research, it will be helpful to you to organize data very, very professionally. All right, that has been, that has been for advanced formatting features. You can consider exploring others, other future as well, as we move on to our next part of video. All right, finally, in the last part of this video, we want to look at how we can work with data to perform calculations using very many formulae. Now, remember we have looked at how we can enter data in the table, so let's summarize with how we can use basic functions or basic formulas to perform uh, calculations. Okay, like you can see, we already had some data that we have been working with, and uh, in this table, as an Example, we are required to compute amount. This should have been a budget. You can observe we have quantity and we have price. So we are logically supposed to get here the amount. If you do some simple mathematics, you have quantity and you have price, the amount would be the product of quantity times price. That's basically that what should be. Now to perform calculation at this point, you click in the cell which is supposed to take the answer, then go to the layout tab. From the layout tab here, click on formula. Now automatically Excel will, rather Microsoft Word will uh, imagine you want to add. You can see they have brought equal sum and then left, but we don't want any of that. Although we'll be multiplying what is on the left, so what we do is you can remove this and then go where there's function, select product, because we want to multiply, but we want to multiply what is on the left, so the function is equals product in bracket left. Then click OK. Once more, you click where you're going to put the answer, click on formula, and then go and put in the formula. Formula is equals product and then open bracket is left equals product left. That's how we perform calculations. Please note that you'll have to do the same here in Microsoft Word. You don't have an autofill handle which would allow you to copy the formula elsewhere. Here. Uh, then also here, we want to multiply 3 by this, so click there, then click on formula. Instead of this, we put equals product, and then in bracket left. Now, where I am interested in getting the total value at the bottom here, I would wish to add a row at the bottom, so I can simply... Uh, Click outside in this cell and then press enter key. There are many ways of adding a row. You can just click outside this row and on your keyboard press enter key. Alternatively, you can click in this cell, use tab key, or we can right click in this cell and then select insert, then choose below. Because one the row to be below. I want to merge this part here and I 
uh, total let me highlight then I click match so I'm going to put here total so where I want to get the total amount here so I click in that box where the answer is supposed to be go to the layout tab move to the data group click on formula and having selected formula the formula is sum the, the, fun, the formula we shall utilize is sum but we are adding everything that is above so it will be equals sum above click ok so that you have the final answer please you can generalize in case you wanted to get average just to give some little demonstration if I had here values and I wish I wanted to get average in that part I would click where I would want to put the answer click formula instead of sum I can remove this formula go to the paste function here and choose average then click choose average it is equals average then above then click OK automatically I will have the average okay that is it for today uh, that is all about tables uh, please in the next video I'll be exploring some tips and hacks uh, on tables I'll give you very important ways of how you can work as a pro as far as tables go. So at least here we have been exploring how to create tables and how to format tables. If you are new to this channel, please I would encourage you to subscribe so that you receive notifications whenever new videos are added as well. That's it for today. Thank you. This is uh, Dennis Kruger.